Oh no, what's happened to our beautiful upcycling grow wall made of pallets? It used to look like this, but now she's all dying and looking pretty shabby to be honest. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and this is the sixth bonus episode in our five now six part series on how to grow food in small spaces. In this episode, I want to share with you an update on some of the projects that were shown throughout the series and also give you a bit of a sneak peek or a look at the behind the scenes of the making of this series because I think it's kind of relevant to the actual content of the series and the episodes itself. Episode four was the upcycling video. If you remember, if you saw it, if you haven't, have a look up here. This one was where we mainly focused on creating this wall garden, a vertical garden that was excellent for small spaces. Now, what's gone wrong here? Well, two things. The first one is easy. Most of the plants here, the strawberries, the salad crops, even the basil now, and all those other Asian greens there, most of them have run out of their normal life anyway. So they're starting to go to seed. Even if we would have kept trimming them back and harvesting to create more and new growth, eventually these type of annual food crops start to die off or go to seed. It's just natural that it's dying off. The other thing though is probably a little bit my fault. I haven't been watering this as much. A grow wall like this isn't really a priority for us because we can grow all this type of stuff in, we've got plenty of raised beds and space for that. I did this as a project to show people what could be done in a small space, especially, especially growing vertical. Even though this is a really great method of growing in small spaces, this type of growing system you can imagine it's, it's a wall and if it hit, gets the sun hitting it, there's not a lot of mass to it. This thin bit of soil running through these pallets dries out really fast. So what I would do, even though I'm not a big watering system person, but I would probably put a drip system in and have that drip, drip system going daily, maybe even twice a day, so that the soil stays moist and the plants don't dry out or don't suffer from heat stress coming on and off, drying out and then quickly watering and drying out, which is what I was doing. But having said that, we got several months of great food out of this. So yes, even though it might look like a bit of a failure at the end, which it really isn't, and we've still got chilies and basil and the odd plant. And I'll probably salvage some of these strawberries and this chili plant and maybe some basil, but am I gonna keep this grow wall going? No, I won't. I am gonna refurbish our compost piles. This bay system is one of my tasks that I wanna do next year that I wanted to do this year but didn't get the chance to because I had so many other projects, but that's what I'll do. But I won't be regrowing the grow wall because for us, yes, if we down the track move to suburbia or an apartment or something, I may well consider it. But for now, that's the update on the grow wall. Episode three, if you remember, was the balcony garden. And I really enjoyed making it. It did have its challenges though, because we were in an inner city apartment complex, you had lots of people coming and going and it wasn't easy for the whole crew and everyone to organize the cameras and the settings. Uh, so it was, yeah, it had its own challenges, but it was a heck of a lot of fun to do. I love the concept of this video because fruit, veg and herbs, grow really excellent in pots. And it's something that I use pots here all the time on our acreage. They don't need a whole lot of soil. They just need a little bit of love, the right amount of fertilizer and care and water, and you can get a really good crop out of a surprisingly small amount of medium or soil. And I can just see myself in years time, you know, 20 years time maybe, retiring on the water somewhere, hopefully in an apartment with a little bit of sun so that I can continue on, you know, in my 70s and even into my 90s maybe with small containers 
and just growing those types of plants that make a huge impact in your cooking. Those flavorful plants, the herbs and the spices. Think of easy to grow plants in pots like ginger, turmeric, chilies. Those plants are really easy, all those types of Mediterranean herbs. And we, we showed that in the video, the Asian pot, the Mediterranean pot, if you can remember, a salad pot, you know, those types of arrangements, you can grow a heck of a lot of food in a small space. And like I was alluding to, if you grow the right types of crops, you don't need much to really flavor up a dish. So you can turn bland rice or bland potatoes or bland pasta into a magical dish with just a few herbs and spices to give it that big lift and flavor without hardly any effort at all. Episode two was the small animals episode. Really cute and cuddly. I enjoyed this episode as well. I enjoyed the whole series, of course, but this is a very warm type episode. And I told the story of how we found Buddy or how Buddy found us, our guinea pig coming in from the scrub, down from the chicken pen and up to our homestead where my eldest son saw him looking through our window, went outside and grabbed him and that's when we started keeping guinea pigs. And how useful these guinea pigs are in a small garden. What I wanted to get across in this episode was that keeping small animals like chickens and guinea pigs and even rabbits if you can in certain areas, we can't keep them here but they're more than just companion animals or companion pets. They can also provide manure fertilizer for the garden and eat up food scraps so they're good at recycling waste. And plus, they can also create food like chickens gives us eggs to eat. Small animal keeping is becoming very popular in the inner cities. I mean, I even know people that keep them well, not personally, but I've read that people keep them in apartments, chickens, and they have chicken nappies to catch the poop so they don't poop all around the apartment. Cute, a little bit weird, but yeah, it's getting very popular even in the inner city to keep small animals. And I can understand why, because there are lots of benefits for them. And for those of you who don't know, we finally got some more chickens now that we have finished off building our electric fence. I needed to tack on some extra wire to the inside of that fence to stop smaller animals punching through. But now that that's done, we've got some more chickens and they've been adapting well now to their new home, loving the free ranging. At the same time, I've been working really hard at putting in a run, a chicken run off their coop. So retrofitting a chicken run using as much recycled and natural materials from our own property as possible. And that's been a lot of hard yakka, but I've been, it was one of my goals to get done this year. And I wanted to get it finished by Christmas. So I'm on track to, but I've got a lot of work still to go on it. And hopefully I can have it done by Christmas day. Well, that's the goal anyway. And finally, episode one was build a raised garden bed. And this was my favorite episode of all. And it happened to be the first one. That's what sort of kicked off the whole series for us in a really great frame of mind. Saray kindly accepted our invitation to use her property for this project. And she was the perfect candidate to be honest, because she'd already, as you know, was starting to keep chickens and she'd been doing that for a while. She was interested in food gardening and she had grown vegetables and herbs before, but she just hadn't had the chance to get a vegetable garden going. And so it was really good timing for us to be able to come in and build her first raised vegetable garden for her. And it turned out excellent. The whole day was great fun to do and film. It was just a, a really nice atmosphere and a really good project for everyone to do. The Growing in Small Spaces series overall was a great success. I had a lot of fun doing it, as you'd expect, but working with a bunch of young up and coming 
filmmakers from Griffith University it was great for me to learn tips and tricks about the industry myself because I hadn't had any first-hand experience working with a film crew before. It was just good to get a different perspective as well from these young people. I let them formulate a lot of what they wanted to see. Yes, I wrote the script and I did the demonstrations and I used my knowledge in the series, but essentially they're the ones that came up with the concepts, the series overall and the different episodes. And I just wanted them to tell me what younger people wanted to see because primarily a lot of them are the ones living in the inner cities and trying to grow food in small spaces. So I wanted to tap into that demographic and find out what they really wanted to know. So now I just want to finish off with the year in review. I won't be too much longer. It's been a terrific year for self-sufficient me on YouTube. There's been over 80,000 new people subscribed to our channel and I feel that my message of self-sufficiency has been refined and is coming across a lot better especially since when I first started making videos. But not everything went as planned. For a start I wanted to get more content done this year and most of the time I was only able to pump out about one video a week, sometimes two. There might have been the odd occasion where I did three videos in a week. I would really love to be putting out at least three videos per week. And that's what I want to strive to do next year. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I tried to do it this year. I didn't get it and I'm a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to pump out a little bit more, at least 20 or 25 more videos over the last 12 months but I'm working on it I'm getting faster at my editing we'll see how we go I also didn't get to live stream at the start of the year one of my goals was to get into live streaming and take you guys live and I just wasn't really prepared to do that the other reason is technically our wireless signal here just isn't good enough at the moment to get into wireless streaming and I wasn't confident that I'd be able to do that properly so that's why I stayed away from it but hopefully in the future we'll be able to set up some live streams and maybe you know even get some small workshops going or just a live chat and have a bit of fun so yeah there was a few disappointments but primarily there were more positives of course it was a fantastic year for getting projects done and that was one of my big goals this year was to stop putting everything on the back burner and getting some things done. Things like the front garden beds, finally got them changed over to high sided raised beds. The gourd tunnel, we got that nailed and that's turned out fantastic. I can't wait to show you guys a video on our new gourd tunnel and what we're growing in that. The electric fence build, and like I said, that one's in the pipe work as well, that video coming out, and that'll be quite comprehensive. And we completed several other pressing projects as well, some small, some larger, but really nailed a lot of stuff this year, which I'm very happy with. And of course, I'm still working all my way up until Christmas to get the chicken run done. Next year, I'm already looking forward to and planning to bring you new projects and videos of those projects so watch this space i'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to my patreons over at patreon.com i know recently there's been a few issues on that platform and we might talk about that later maybe into the new year on what we could do about that because i know we've lost several supporters because of some of those issues that's happening it's not to do with me but it's to do with the way Patreon conducts itself overall. So that should be an interesting thing to talk about. But in light of that, I just wanna say thank you very much for your continued support. It was, it was you who gave me the confidence to take on this as like a, a new career change. And if, if it wasn't for the 80 of you that continued to support me, I'm not sure that I would have been, that I would have kept this going. So 
I owe a lot to you guys. Thank you for having my back. Also, thank you, the rest of you out there who supported me by commenting, by liking my videos, by sharing my content around, by just watching my content. Thank you very much. You are the reason why my content creation career has taken off so well over the last 12 months and I have you to thank. So thank you. And that's it. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And remember, if you can't be self-sufficient in everything, just be self-sufficient in something. And look and see the earth through her eyes. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. You got it upside down, this chain. Oh. Yeah, you do. <laughs> like that. Yes. You need to do it. Yeah. You got to have a really hard grip. Yeah. Galangle. What, what what do you think of this? I was thinking of starting the video off with um gangalangalangalangalangle <laughs> like yes. the old bonanza thing. I love it. You yeah. think that'd work?